is a chief executive officer of Treasury Consulting LLP. And today we would be covering a very dedicated topic which is on insolvency and bankruptcy code distress asset. As you very well understand that insolvency and bankruptcy court currently in the limelight and there are a lot of action which is happening about the insolvency and bankruptcy court. Like today also, if you have downloaded InShorts, which is an app of the news, you've got to know that the DBS India, which is an Indian subsidiary of one of the best Singaporean banks we have, DBS Singapore has went against some oil base, some small oil company, which uh, I don't know where it is, uh, some oil company in NCLT because that company is not been able to pay the money which DBS India lent it to that company. Insolvency and bankruptcy is a very hot area nowadays and approximately 200 corporates which are in 200 corporates which are in the NCLT and they are facing the proceedings. We are not here discussing about whether NCLT would be able to decide. We are not here discussing about what would be the moratorium period about that. We are not here to decide but what you know what are the issues we have pertaining to IRP which is insolvency sorry interim resolution professional. We are not here discussing about IP which, which is insolvency professional. We are here to discuss about something which is absolutely a critical thing but unfortunately being missed by insolvency and bankruptcy court. From the very first day I am saying that insolvency and bankruptcy court has no linkage with the financial market. It's a court which has been made whereby on paper there were several insolvency laws pertaining to the different industries that got clubbed. The company law board got phased out and we replaced this with NCLT. And the beauty, the beauty of the contention is that it has no link with the financial market and here is an example. Sitting today, the Indian banking is approximately 100 trillion INR, 100 trillion Indian rupee. Now 1 trillion is 1000 billion Indian rupee and 1 billion is 1000 million Indian rupee and 1 million is 10 lakh Indian rupee. This much amount is the size of the Indian banking as far as the research reports are concerned which are very well available in the public domain. Now the beauty of the contention is that according to the Reserve Bank of India as at 31st March 2017 the stressed asset is approximately valued at roughly 10 trillion Indian rupee. So if I compare this with the size of the Indian banking then this is approximately 10%. So the total banking is roughly 100 trillion while the stress assets is 10 trillion so total is approximately 10 percent. If I go with the same research and as far as the newspapers are concerned as far as the discussion on, on the various TVs like ET now, CNBC are there, approximately 200 Indian corporates are in NCLT which is National Company Law Tribunal. There are few companies which are in which are in appellate authority also which is NCLAT National Company Law Appellate Tribunal whereby the either the financial creditor or the operational creditor is not in agreement with the judgment which has been given by the NCLT. So there are few companies here as well but there is no exact data which we have how many companies are in appellate. But as far as the NCLT is concerned, as far as the, the print media is concerned, we have approximately 200. Now assuming, assuming NCLT give you an approval to liquidate that company. Take an example of DBS India. DBS India has raised some viewpoint against some company XYZ and assuming that DBS India won this in NCLT. First of all, DBS India have to wait for 270 days. First, they will file an application and within 14 days, NCLT have to accept that. And if NCLT will reject that, then you very well understand what would happen. And secondly, the, in the DBS has to put his case in such a way that boss it's seriously they are not interested either they are not interested in paying my money or they do not have or might be both the condition. Now the question is in case of a financial creditor assuming NCLT will give you an approval to liquidate that company would you be able to liquidate that company? Keep insolvency and bankruptcy proceeding aside and think there is a company in any country is getting insolvent and that company is, 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 is going to be sell their stress asset. Boss, do you seriously think they would be able to sell as far as the India is concerned? The biggest thing is that do we have the buyers for distress assets in India? Do we have the buyer for distress assets in India? We do not have the buyer for distress assets in India. 
and the very important point which we need to understand and which we will be covering even if even if distress is set but we have a very little buyer of distress asset the supply is very big but the demand is not that big so the supply is approximately 10 trillion indian rupees more or less this is growing how many of you those who are watching this video those who are having a print media those who are looking at the internet research reports and variety of others they able to conclude that boss the the the, the figures which reserve bank of india is giving is correct I seriously doubt the authenticity of 10 trillion Indian rupee because according to me the value is more than 15 trillion Indian rupee and majority of the banks are hiding that figure. This is point number one. So as far as the insolvency and bankruptcy code is concerned and as far as the distress asset is concerned, the number one beauty in the game is it is a supply glut cycle. What do you mean by supply glut cycle? That supply is so big that the demand is not as big so example there are 100 people who wanted to sell their item but only few people who wanted to buy that so you very well understand the pricings will went down so if there are 100 people who wanted to sell their asset and there are only two buyers who wanted to buy the asset you can very well understand that what would be the haircut these 100 sellers would have to take in their books because they are selling it as simple as that now another beauty which we have as far as the insolvency and bankruptcy code is concerned we have a lot of issues as far as the valuation is concerned we have an issue about tangible assets intangible assets haircut provisioning contingent valuation benchmarks lot of times people are saying that uh, you know insolvency professional had hired somebody and he is saying boss this is the value of that company we are just reading that and forget that okay dbs india has put somebody in the nclt and that uh, that uh, uh, you know insolvency professional will calculate the value assuming dbs india uh, had given 200 crores to that company and now dbs india uh, you know is, is is getting only 15 20 crore out of that so dbs india would be very happy oh i'm getting something right at least everything is not zero but the point of contention is there are intangible the valuation of intangible asset is highly subjective in nature we as a company doing a valuation of intangible assets we are doing valuation of the distressed asset if the valuation which we are doing would completely be deferred by valuation other is doing because this is a very subjective thing and it depends upon the financial model and most of the companies in india have no financial model this is an excel based work you go to any big four hardly limited big fours would have valuation model and out of even that very few are using it it's more or less in a more or less an excel game you just make out an excel you noted some assumption on that assumption you're calculating the valuation which you are submitting in the nclt majority of the time nclt himself do not understand that valuation which is the reality because we understand that nclt in india is short of manpower and then there are the issues so subject to valuation the company who is selling will uh, go against the nclt saying that boss the valuation which you're giving of me is absolutely incorrect i don't value that that low i value more that's an issue another thing which we have recently found out by looking at a lot of cases is the valuation of an intangible asset there are a lot of times we heard without quoting the name of the people that intangible asset that nclts this is national company law tribunal are not allowing the valuation of an intangible asset or do not allow interim professional sorry insolvency professional to include the value of an intangible asset in the books this is something as far as strategy consulting llp is concerned we disregard that intangible do holds a value example officially kingfisher has not yet closed it's an entity which is still running of course from the past few years five six years not a single plane has been boarded it has not landed all the planes are just uh, they are more like like a sunk cost but Kingfisher as a whole would have a name. So assuming tomorrow Kingfisher will get sold and the Kingfisher being bought by Jet Airways, then Jet Airways don't need to do much marketing on the Kingfisher. Practically speaking, Jet Airways need not to do any marketing on the Kingfisher because people understand Kingfisher very well. Now in that sense, Kingfisher is an intangible. That intangible has to be taken into consideration if you are doing the valuation where when you when as a as an insolvency professional do you are doing the valuation but the beauty of the game 
is started when NCLT, National Company Law Tribunal, is saying that, boss, we are not taking any intangible into consideration. My biggest question is for the companies like Bhushan Steel, JP Group, Sahara, your Kingfisher, your Educom, all those companies, those who turned insolvent, they have an, they have an intangible, Educom. It's a company which is known everywhere in India. A company who, who to, whereby a share price touched more than 7,000 rupees at a point of time. A company who installed smart, smart classes in almost all schools of India at a point of time. That is a different fact that business turned true or business not turned true. That is something which we are not discussing. Intangible would hold a value. NCLT cannot say no to the intangible. What NCLT can say, they can have an, they can have an haircut. But if you would have read IBC carefully, the another biggest silly mistake which people have done who make the IBC, IBC is haircut provisioning. They have not taken any haircut provisioning. What is a haircut provisioning? Assuming you are selling Kingfisher today, the value of the ten, tangible assets of Kingfisher is assuming 500 crores. Assuming, I am taking just hypothetical example. And assuming intangible is 1500 crores. If you disregard intangible in case of Kingfisher, max to max what you can do, you can take 80% of haircut. You can say, boss, I don't treat this as 1500, I treat 1500 minus 1200, which is 300 crore that this is I'm going to take. Because I think by the time we are going to take a decision to dissolve Kingfisher, since they've not been able to pay the money to the financial creditor, the value of that goodwill would have reduced by 80%. So it's better if you take a 80% haircut. Here we are fine. But if NCLT is giving a judgment that the intangible should not be taken into consideration, this is practically a impractical decision. This is an immature decision that in any valuation, any, any educating authority or any appellate authority is disregarding the valuation of an intangible. Another biggest problem which we have here is the contingent valuation benchmark. Today, I have an asset anywhere in US, anywhere, you name the country, Texas, California, Philadelphia, Washington, DC, you just name the country. I have an asset, I have a benchmark which helps me to value this contingent asset and that is I tax. And we have iBox also. iTrex being the oldest, that is why most of the people remember that. We have iBox also now. So you go anywhere. You go to US, you go to Europe, you go anywhere. You have an asset which is used to value an intangible asset. Sorry, which is used to value a contingent asset. Now in India, do we have any index which is used to value a contingent asset? We have not a single index which we do have. We do not have a single index which helps you to value a contingent asset. And if we are going to take iTrax into consideration, then iTrax won't be having that company. Do you think that you would have Educomp in iTrax? You would have Bush and Steel in iTraft? You would have JP Group in iTrax, Sahara Group in iTrax, and that oil company which recent, uh, which, which today DBS has, said, uh, DBS has moved this company to NCLT? In the absence of in the not taking valuation of an intangible, haircut provisioning and also contingent valuation benchmark, it's, it's, it's seriously a big mistake which people are doing. At the same time, another biggest mistake which we are doing is the absence of ARC, Asset Reconstruction Company. That is why Nishkri has said that we are in a situation of a supply glut, whereby more than 10 trillion Indian rupee of asset are scheduled to to, to be distressed or already distressed in the book even if we go as per Reserve Bank of India competition which is always in dilemma. All the, all the intelligent people never take RBI calculation into consideration, never take. The way they are showing inflation, the GDP growth figures, the IAP figures, the CPI figures, I always tend to disregard that. But do we have a set reconstruction company? Asset Reconstruction Company, a company private limited is nothing but it's a vulture which has more or less debt. Because the job of a vulture is to eat the dead animals. And that is same the role of an Asset Reconstruction Company. Asset Reconstruction Company has already, the Indian owned Asset Reconstruction Company is already dead. 
and 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 there is no money RBI would have as of now to fund that ARC. And even if if you are going to fund that ARC, that that they they won't be able to sell it further. So take an example. If I go as per Economic Times, last year itself. More than 328,000 crores of asset has been submitted or moved in the books of ARC because they are distressed. It is just like I have a dump wherein I am just filling the I am just filling the trash. There would be a time when the dump would get filled. Then what you do, boss? Then what you are going to do? Then the trash would be outside. It would be in the air. That is something which we need to understand. Another beautiful thing. By the time. We don't have ARC and currently if, if you would have read the uh, uh, newspaper carefully you would have got to know you would have got to know that Blackstone which is the leading eye banker of this globe they are setting up ARC in India. In that regards they are buying approximately I think 10% odd stake in IBRC which is an Indian company. Point of contention is very clear India do not have any ARC if you seriously wish to have a successful insolvency in bankruptcy court you need not to have ARC but you need to resolve the key issues like intangible valuation which is the which is your contingent valuation benchmarks and respective and at the same time you need to resolve a very important thing which is almost on the head of everybody which is expected credit losses ECL even if take a big example even if Blackstone you know would able to set up a base here in India and Blackstone would be able to do a wonders. Black, this would be done by Blackstone India not Blackstone US and Blackstone India is subject to INDAS Indian Accounting Standards and they would surely be under AS109 and in AS109 they are supposed to calculate expected credit losses in three phases. One is add initial recognition of that distress asset. You will calculate ECL for near 12 months. Then you will add every reporting date. So how, how they report? They report almost every month. On every reporting date you need to calculate the ECL. And if you think that that asset is subject to a major deterioration pertaining to credit, at least uh, the, the, the entire stuff has to be taken in the PNL, which is ECL, expected credit losses, which is the third phase, impairment of that, that financial instrument or that financial asset. But the point is very clear. If I am Blackstone, for a minute I assume I am able to create a better ARC in India, for a minute. And I am buying an asset of a company say Kingfisher, Educom, Jindal Steel, Bhushan Steel, JP Group and many and out of that I would be able to I say I am paying 6 rupees I am getting an asset of 100 assuming that the assets turn toxic then what would happen? Would I have a capability to take ECL further in the books? Do you think that these ARC is running so much margin that they are able to take ECL? And last line before winding up this video Please read AS109 very carefully. They will tell you about three steps of ECL, but as usual, they will not tell you that how you will determine in the second step that this financial asset or instrument, which at initial decognition was not having a substantial credit risk or credit breakdown, would now have. They have not mentioned a single defined methodology pertaining to that and in the absence of that the valuation of a second step is highly subjective in nature i don't understand why when we why whenever we make laws insolvency and bankruptcy ind as we don't look at these small small things valuation issues according to me insolvency and bankruptcy court is is an act which was just made it in a hurry there was not appropriate test which was conducting on that test. More or less it has no linkage with any accounting standard. If you seriously read insolvency and bankruptcy court, it has no linkage with expected credit losses. I don't know why. I don't know what is the logic behind that. And in longer tenor, insolvency and bankruptcy court is subject to major amendment. And by the time we will do these amendments, I will make sure that the market would be somewhere else. Because now, today, 
which is approximately 15 September 2017, we are moving towards haircut models. And here we are talking about a simplest definition of a haircut. This was the purpose of the video is to let you know that Hawaii Insolvency and Bankruptcy Code and how distress asset is an issue. We as a company is having a practice of the valuation of the distress asset. In case you have any requirement, my website is www.tricyconsulting.in. My mobile number is 9899242978. My Skype ID is Rahul5327. My email is rahul.magan at the rate treasuryconsulting.in. In case you have any requirement, do come to us. You're most welcome. Thank you and have a wonderful time ahead.